Welcome back to another session um, where we last left off. Um, I think we were still setting up the logic for the level in terms of counting the number of breakable blocks and then figuring out how to decrease that amount every time a block gets destroyed. So let's look at our scripts. We gotta go to level. We need to check out the level script. And we also need to check out the block script. So in our level, we created a this method to decrease the value of this breakable blocks um, by one. And then it checks if there's no more blocks on the screen. If that's the case, then we move on to the next level. So, if there are no more blocks, go to the next. So, um, this method here gets called for every collision a block makes with a, a ball. So, if we test it out right now. You probably won't be able to hear the the noise which is fine. Yeah, it goes to the next level. And this time I did hear the sound because before I didn't. Whoa. Oh, can I do it? Oh. And yeah, because this is the next scene. That's why it plays the game over. Uh, so yeah, it works. Um, so let's continue on with the video. So this is the challenger we did, and yeah, we basically, or I, sh I think we already s did this part, and I might have went back, so we, we yeah, we, I guess we can just continue. We have to make a separate method. I wonder if we can do that too. Um, can we refactor? Oh, here it is. No refactoring available. I guess we have to do it ourselves, so it's just private void. Um, 
block destroyed. So it plays the sound, then it decreases the amount of breakable blocks, and then it destroys the game object. Now I think, logically, this should be over here. It should play the sound, and then the object should be deleted, and or destroyed, and then the level, or the, the count value should decrease. It's kind of like the way like he had it. I gotta keep that in mind now. In the future, I guess um, it's best to kind of create a separate method for it, I guess. Yeah, I'll try to get used to that. Um, I do want to check on something real quick. I noticed that said uh, PS Vita. Is it possible to play games on there? So let's see. How is this opportunity to develop PS Vita games? That's a that's peculiar. So it didn't work for them. I wonder why. Let me check if it works for me. Because mine should be the exact same. Oh, that time it didn't play the sound. So it did work. I wonder what... I want to try to solve their their error. So we love the scene. It might be their condition. Here. If they set it to equals equal to zero, that might cause some issues maybe. Because that's what I've experienced in the past. Oh no, they copied the same thing. That's correct. Wait, what? I didn't do that, did I? Yeah, I didn't need to do that. I'm thinking something. Wait, what happened here? Alright, let's just, I'm just gonna continue to see if that is like the proper solution. I see. In his, 
he didn't have this object with this script so it, it was null for him but because I had it here um, it worked for me so I do think it's a lot better to have all of them the scene loader inside the level because it handles like everything in the level I think that's a lot nicer to have so that's what I'm gonna do as well because it just feels a lot cleaner let's try it again yep it works still I wonder why this is kind of cut off a bit prefab a bit so we gotta go level lock this just to be safe Go scripts and it automatically applies to uh, all I, I was zoomed in that's why but yeah it applies to all level objects I don't know for this one because I edit it individually but yeah we'll see In level two, we also gotta change that. Save. What's this error right here? Yeah, I need to fix this. Um, let me see how far also we need to go so oh we still need quite a bit all right that's fine um so we're getting some issues here i'm kind of confused considering we did take into the account of the length minus one so it shouldn't be going out of bounds out of range so let me just debug it real quick debug log um, and um, all right. So um, this is for the sound, right? If we go to uh, ball, we have uh, where is it? Audio. Wait, why is it empty? Wait, why is it empty? <laughs> oh, that was the issue then. <laughs> but it was playing sound. Oh no, wait. Wait, 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 wait. It was playing sounds though, that's the weird part. Maybe in level one, I did it by accident. Let me see. Let's go to ball. No, it's empty too. Then how did it play sound? That's weird. Oh, it wasn't. It has, 
it wasn't it hasn't been playing any sound it was playing the block sound when it gets hit uh, alright let's go fix that real quick so I mean, we locked the prefab asset nice so I think I did everything but click so we can just drag and drop uh, that over here Drop it. Nice. And it automatically gets applied, so let's go play this now. Uh, I'm, let me just. Yeah. Make some uh, there you go. There's. Did I zoom in by accident? I did. All right. Is there still any errors? Nope. Cool. So we can get rid of that now. To log. And then we can continue. The next lecture. Using time scale. Using time dot time scale. In this video, we're going to set up a system where we can change the speed of the game. So if I want the game to be really slow, then I can. If I want the game to be really fast, bloop. Hey, that was super fast. Then I can change that as well with this simple slider. I can change it from 0.1 up to 10. Okay, so let's jump in and change the speed of our game. Awesome. First thing we'll do here is jump over to the Unity docs and have a look what it has to say about time. Time time scale. So it's a float value. It's also static. Is time scale? Oh, it's a it's a variable. Um, let me see. The scale at which the time is passing. This can be used for slow motion effects. When time scale is 1.0, the time is passing as fast as real time. When time scale is 0.5, the time is passing two times slower than real time. When time scale is set to zero, the game is basically paused if all your functions are frames, frame rate independent. Except for real time since startup, time scale affects all the time and delta time measured variables of the time class. If you lower time scale, it is recommended to also lower time fixed delta time by the same amount. Fixed update functions will not be called when time scale is set to time zero. dot time scale. A couple of clues in here. One is that when time oh, almost forgot. Oh, this reminds me like one of those shooters that slow down when you like when you do something cool or when you like let's say you're 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 cover you're, you're covering you're trying to cover or st sorry uh stay covered and then you decide to jump out and uh you decide like while you're jumping out you're, you're aiming and shooting uh, we, uh, I think they have this slow, slow mechanism um, and I think this is what they kind of similar to how they do it maybe and I'm referring to kind of like Grand Theft Auto or like uh, Sleeping Dogs where you just jump out of cover and then aim to shoot which slows down the time that's pretty cool I might try to use that for a project maybe if I remember
Alright, we're gonna create a game status. I'm just gonna keep watching actually. Alright, so uh, just so I don't get behind in our level, um, let's go to level 2 since there's more, technically more stuff to do. Um, we're going to um, create a game status object, which he says is used for, um, it's used to store the score, the time, and basically anything regarding the, the game, like the properties of the game we're going to include here. So in this one, I think the name was game status, we're going to create a script, let's go edit the script, oh, actually before we edit, we got, oh, we just got to here and put it to scripts. Uh, game status. Double click on that, and we're good. So mini challenge, he ta he's challenging us to create a way to serialize this value here so that we can change it in our inspector. Um, so just serialize field, and we call this time time scan. Close one F, yes. So this is default. Um, we are going to be updating it or checking this value every uh, frame which is why he placed it originally in the beginning over here did I put oh oh okay sweet Wait, can we actually just start testing it now? Like if we actually change the value of it, then we hit play, we'll actually, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wonder what negative time is, would that be, would that uh, give an error maybe? Or will it go like inverse? 
and it's just making it really fast. It's still moving though, which is weird. Time scale is out, is out of range. The value cannot be less than zero. So they do limit it a bit. Fair enough. So let's go change that. Or um, well, it's a default, so it's probably just gonna go back. Or not? Never mind. Um, so what he wants is to prevent us from going that way or making an impossible value. Uh, I think he's gonna try to restrict it, kind of like how we saw in the beginning of the video, where it was like a certain range or a slider that we could move around to set the value of the game speed. Oh. So range, uh, range attribute, attribute used to make a float or int variable in a script be restricted to a specific range. There is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter min. So we limit the um, the range by doing uh, this range, and then it'd be the first, the minimum value. I guess this is inclusive, so it only goes up to ten. And yeah, so a range between zero and one. A serialized field. We set that to one. So it compiles, or not yet. It's not compiling. That's weird. Maybe it would have been better to just have it as um, maybe it would have been better to just have it as Oh yeah, the the saving because it doesn't really do it all the time. Uh, but yeah, so it works. We have the slider that we can change the speed between 0.1, which I assume is the slowest. Let's just see how slow it is. Go. Cool. Oh wow, that that is slow, but it doesn't really look smooth. <laughs> but now I can win the game, I think. And we'll make it super fast. What?
right, so 30 minutes has already passed, so I'm going to end it here for today. Catch you later. Peace.